Hey guys, welcome to my studio. So the weather has been really weird here lately. I don't know if it's the same where you are, but over here at least, we've had some really cold days where the low for a couple of them were in the high 30s. And then we would have some days like today where the high is 78 degrees. So the weather doesn't really know what it wants to do, but personally, I'm ready for late fall and early winter and I'm kind of feeling in the mood for Christmas time even <laughs> which I know Halloween literally just ended but I don't know I feel like I need I need the spirit right now but anyway so I was inspired to create a piece of artwork kind of honoring the change of seasons from fall to winter because even though the weather has been strange and it's been a little, like it'll be really warm and then it'll be really cold, all of the leaves have changed and they're starting to fall over here and it even smells like fall. So maybe it doesn't quite feel like fall, but it definitely looks like fall outside. I decided to draw some animals um, in like a forest setting, but wearing human clothing. <laughs> Be just because I thought it would be cute. So I drew a bear wearing a flannel, a fox sleeping and cuddling up with a little blanket, um, a rat with a scarf, and a raccoon with a puffy coat and one of those warm winter hats. I wanted to use watercolors for this because I wanted it to have a very light kind of gentle feeling, like it's cozy and kind of cold but in a comfy way if that makes any sense like you're feeling cold outside so you wrap yourself up in a blanket and a scarf and get a nice warm cup of tea and you're enjoying the leaves falling and maybe there's a couple of little flurries going on that was my inspiration for this piece and i also decided to use some different supplies so usually the watercolors i use are the brand holbein with a little bit of Daniel Smith mixed in, but the majority of them are Holbein, and they I have a lot of pastel colors, which I love, but I wanted this to be more transparent and really give that like light and airy feeling that you get with the really transparent watercolors. So I busted out my Paul Rubens watercolors, which I had hardly used until now, and I just need to gush about them for a second because I really like them. So, okay, first of all, I'm also using the Paul Rubens, this is their cold press, 100% um, cotton watercolor paper, but it has little bits of, I think, mica, and so the paper itself sparkles, and it was really a joy to paint on. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go, because first of all, I normally use hot pressed watercolor paper, which is more like fine grained, so the pencil goes down more smoothly, it just personally I think it feels a lot nicer to draw with but painting I didn't really notice much of a difference so I might experiment a little more with cold pressed watercolor papers because I do really like the texture that you get at the end that you don't necessarily get with the hot pressed watercolor papers but as I was saying I decided to use my Paul Rubens watercolors and I am so impressed with them. I knew that they were like highly pigmented and I knew that they had gotten really good reviews, but they also just feel really nice to paint with. They, they have a lot of um, blooming, which is where you put the paint down on the paper and it just goes, like it, it flows in its own unique way. And that does make it harder to control, but I didn't find that it was too hard to control. Um, and that might be just that I'm getting more experience with watercolors, so I kind of know like the amount of water to use for what I want it to do. But it was nice being able to paint so loosely with these watercolors and have it turn out so nicely. Like I wouldn't say it turned out exactly how I envisioned, because I'm still pretty new with watercolors, but I, I am really happy with the result. And I think using these watercolors was definitely the right choice for that. I don't really know how to explain it. And I'm sure you can find 
videos from experts who can talk about this, but my Holbein watercolors, along with them being pastel, which means they're mixed with white, which gives them like a whole other property. Like they're not as transparent as like quote unquote regular watercolors, but they also behave differently. And I don't think it's a matter of them being pastel. I think it's just like the way the watercolors are made. Maybe it's the binder, I'm not really sure. But the Holbein watercolors, when you put them on the paper, they just stay exactly where you put them. And I think that's great when you're doing like character illustrations because you have really, really good control over where the watercolor is going. Like it's literally, it's going to go exactly where you put it and nowhere else. But with this Paul Rubens watercolor, like I said before, it kind of just flows. And so it's a little harder to control. And you can see in some areas, I definitely like went, <laughs> I didn't color in the lines correctly, but I like that property. And I did clean up a little bit of places in the end with a white Posca pen, um, particularly next to the tree where the bear is sitting. It went a little too over the lines, but I kind of like the wild quality that I got with these watercolors and it was just really fun to paint with them to the point where I'm pretty excited to be able to paint with them again and I think my next video will probably also be um, watercolor painting so get a little spoiler there. <laughs> And I also wanted to gush a little bit about these brushes. So the brushes that I'm using for the large majority of this painting are the Hemi brushes that you get with that Hemi jelly gouache set <laughs> that was super popular a couple years ago. And they're fantastic. Like they're really cheap. I think you can get a whole set of them for like 10 bucks on Amazon. And when I need new brushes, I'm definitely going to get them again. Like this isn't supposed to be a product review, but I am so impressed with how they perform. Um, I think they perform every bit as well, or even better than my Princeton brushes. And that was a cool thing to, <laughs> to discover. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much used the size, I think it's a size five for the majority of this painting. And I was able to get really fine details even just with the size five brush. And it wasn't until the very end that I wanted to go in with one of my even smaller, I think it's like size two, I can't remember, but one of my really small Princeton brushes to just do like the final little details. But it was cool going in with a bigger brush and being able to do the large majority of this painting. For most of this video, well, actually for all of this video, it's jumping around a lot because I wanted, I had a very specific color scheme in mind. In fact, what when I sketched this out, I sketched it out digitally and then I did a color composition, which I can pop on the screen right here. And I did that because I wanted the colors to be um, harmonious and just play nicely with each other because I also wanted to make this a print instead of just a page full of different drawings that I was going to cut out and use later. Um, so in order to do that, I wanted it to look really nice as one piece together. And so what I did was I painted kind of by color rather than by subject. So I did like the scarf on the rat and then I went and did the puffy coat on the raccoon, et cetera, et cetera. And doing it that way was kind of strange because that's not how I would normally do a painting. It, it didn't feel supernatural for me, but I think that was the right way to go because then I didn't have to continuously like try to mix the same colors and hope that they look similar because I'm not very good at color matching. So I think that would have made it look a lot more disjointed if I had done it that way. After doing the first light wash of all the different colors, I decided to go in with a little bit darker of the same shade. I didn't want the colors to be too overwhelming, so I kept the shading pretty simple and I just used like darker versions of the same um, shade that I had already done the first layer with because, again, I didn't want 
I just didn't want it to get muddy and I was really afraid that if I tried experimenting too much it would get muddy. The ground does look a little bit muddy in the end but I don't really mind it because it is supposed to be like how the ground looks in the fall with all the different like leaves and so there is kind of like a whole bunch of muddled colors together and there's like a little bit of green left over but there's also all the brown from the dead leaves that have fallen and so I don't really mind that looking muddy but I didn't want the animals to look muddy so I kept the shading simple and again it was just a lot of fun painting with these watercolors. I think that I've really leveled up lately in my watercolor ability and it's just becoming more and more fun to paint with them. It's just been really nice to be able to sit down and play with my watercolors and have a good time with them rather than fight with them the entire time like I used to do. It just feels like finally I'm taking the time and the effort to learn how to paint instead of trying and then getting frustrated and then going back to the types of art that I used to do. It just feels nice like being stubborn about it and really putting in that effort and seeing that effort pay off. So that, that definitely, that keeps me going and it's, it's just been fun. I wanted to talk about plans for this channel. So currently my plan is at least two videos a month, but I have an idea for upping that a little bit and that would be to make more, well, to start making real-time videos of me doing either like a sketchbook spread or um, a quick drawing on my iPad and just recording the entire process and probably not have any voiceover. I might do subtitles instead. Um, I did create a poll in the communities tab and it seemed like most of you were up for that idea. They would not be replacing normal videos. So it would only be like extra on top of normal videos um, because I do really like, I like the process of editing. It's just that I don't always have the time to be able to do like a sketchbook spread and then edit it down into like 15 minutes or so, do the voiceover, you know, the whole thing. But usually sketchbook spreads only take me like an hour and a half, maybe two hours to do. So I would be able to like record it and you would still get to see that content without me having to do like a whole voice recording and all the editing and stuff. So I'm thinking I will probably do that for the next video um, while I work on my next main video idea, which I do have in the works. But yeah, I just wanted to give you an update about that because I'm really working hard at making this channel more consistent because I've just been really enjoying making YouTube videos and I feel like I've kind of hit my stride a little bit and I don't want that momentum to stop. So <laughs> that is my plan. If you have any suggestions for like video ideas you would like to see or maybe like uh, real-time videos like subjects that you would like me to draw or anything like that just any I am always open for comment and critique and everything so feel free to spill your ideas in the comment section So after I did all the watercolor, I, as usual, went in with some colored pencil 
And I only used two colors. I used a red and a blue because again, I didn't want there to be too many colors involved. I just felt like it, it needed some line work and a little bit of texture in order to feel complete. So for the, the things that are blue, like the raccoon's puffy jacket and the rat's scarf, I outlined in blue. And then I pretty much outlined everything else in red. And with the ground, I just did a little bit of scratching with both red and blue colored pencils to give it, again, a little bit of texture, a little bit more color. And I pretty much just left it like that. And then I go in with a Posca pen and I add a whole bunch of little white accents that I just can't help but doing. I love, I, I wanted to make it kind of look like there were little flurries in the air. So I did little white dots and I also did a bunch of tiny little white patches on the ground to make it seem like maybe there's a little bit of snow that's sticking, but it's still mostly fall. You know, like when you have one of those November snow days, which we don't really get here, but I know in some places they do. <laughs> so I wanted it to be that kind of a feeling. So yeah, I don't have too much more to say about this. Um, this print and a sticker of the rat is going to be the November Patreon. So I just want to give that a really quick plug because I'm very excited about this month's Patreon and um, it would be really cool to be able to share it with more people. But I do have a Patreon. It's really just meant to be a sticker club where I just have one sticker every month and nothing else. But I, I can't help myself and I often do other things like downloadables, like wallpapers, um, sometimes like profile icons and just various other things. And sometimes I'll throw in a print as well as the sticker or I'll throw in a couple of stickers. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun and I would really appreciate it if you checked it out. It's only $5 a month. So if you're interested, that would be a really cool way to support me for not a lot of money. But yeah, this month it's the sticker of the rat in the scarf looking at the leaf and the print as a whole as a 5x7 print. So yeah, I'm super excited about it and I hope you are too. But that is all I have for you now. So enjoy the rest of the video and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!